Hi everyone, this is Arun. Welcome back to another video on OTBI. Today I wanted to show you, today I wanted to answer a few of the questions that I have received in the comments on a few of the videos. So I'll take this um, opportunity to go in a little more detail on a few of the uh, features in OTBI. The first one I want to cover is the view and canvas size properties. So there was one question around how do I resize the, um, uh, the view size. So if it's a table with so many columns, um, you know, how do I resize the view size and the canvas size properties? Uh, the second question was around uh, when you drill down from a summary analysis to a detailed analysis, how do I get back to the summary analysis? And I'll throw in a few tips on drill down options in there as well. Okay, um, let's get started. First of all, I wanted to thank everyone for the support and feedback. I've got some really great feedback from you guys. Um, so um, thank you. So thank you for that. Okay, let's get started. All right, I am in the BI catalog. I've created two um, analysis, one summary and one detail. So if I go into the detailed analysis, let me edit that. We are in the uh, results <coughs> tab. So let's first see how to, um, so if I preview this uh, report, right? So. Uh, let me go into preview and default and you can see that there is a uh, you know you have to scroll horizontally to view the data right so uh, one of the questions was how do I uh, resize the canvas or the view so that the user doesn't have to uh, scroll horizontally so the first thing you want to do is uh, look at uh, the um, view properties. So I'm in the table view, uh, the view properties. And you can simply increase the width here. So if I increase it to, uh, let's say, uh, 1600 and click OK, and you can see that that increases the size of the view. And I can resize here. Um, all right. So that makes it look much, much better. So if, if if I preview it now, you should see that the uh, user doesn't have to, maybe not here. Let me uh, save this and then let's go back to the catalog and let's open it and preview the details. All right, so this is the one. Now you can see that uh, we, the view has resized based on the size that we set. So we set it at to 1500 pixels so that's how it's going to show up in the screen so this is one way to um, resize the view so the user doesn't have to scroll horizontally uh, the other option that i wanted to show you since we are already talking about this is uh, the canvas properties so if i go into the canvas properties or the container properties um, i have um, what we call as uh, width and height. Obviously, you can set the width and the height. Uh, also, you do have uh, padding options. So if you want to pad the view within the container, you can do that. So now you can see that it's close to the container border, the view border, the left border, and the bottom and the right border are close to the view um, uh, borders, right? So if I want to change that, I can include a padding. So let's say I want to include a left padding of 20 pixels, or maybe I make it 50 pixels, and right padding of 50 pixels. So now you can see that it kind of uh, puts space uh, between, uh, between the container and the view. So you see that nice space between the container and the view. So that's what padding allows you to do. So uh, when you work on uh, reports and when you want to make it visually uh, look good, these are some of the options that you can do. And there's another option that I wanted to show you, which is um, uh, enable alternate styling. So if I click this, um, 
you can see that it kind of changes the look and feel of the uh, view, the table. And it, this is an easy way for you to make the uh, view or the visualization look good. Even though it's a table, it kind of looks good with the alternate table, uh, alternate um, uh, styling option. And you can obviously go in and change the uh, background colors, um, etc. Okay. All right. So that's about styling and sizing the container and the uh, view properties. All right. Uh, the next question that I had was around um, drill down. And the question was, when I drill down from the invoice summary or, or the summary analysis to the detailed analysis, how do I navigate back to the uh, summary analysis? So let's say we have a, a summary analysis here, which is the invoice summary. And you can see that we have a table and I can click on, uh, let's say, advanced corp. And it takes you to the detailed analysis that we just built, right? And, um, you know, you can obviously click the back button on the browser to go back to the summary analysis. Uh, the second option is to, um, if you look at the bottom of the uh, browser, you'll see the navigation here. So this is the detailed, and if you go want to go back to the summary, you click on the summary, and it takes you back to the summary analysis. So that those are two options. The third option is, let's say you want to do a dashboard. So I can create a dashboard. Let's say it's a test dashboard, click OK. And I'm going to drag and drop the um, summary analysis in here. So drag and drop the summary analysis. That's all I need. Click Save. And then if I run this, you can see that in my dashboard, I have uh, the summary analysis. And if I click on Advanced Corp Supplier, it takes me to the detailed analysis. And here, in here, I have a return uh, link. So I can click on the return link to go back to the dashboard, which in this case is the summary analysis. So those are the three different options that you have uh, to navigate from the detailed analysis back to the summary analysis. Uh, the third thing I wanted to show is uh, one option that I forgot to mention while we were creating the drill down. So if I click on edit on the summary analysis and go to criteria tab and let's go to the column properties and go to the interaction tab. Uh, you can see that I have uh, I've enabled the drill down action from here which navigates to the uh, detailed analysis. Uh, you can have multiple uh, action links. So, you know, uh, you can have one field where you want to navigate to the details, invoice details page. Maybe there's another field that you want and you want to navigate to a different analysis. So you can have multiple options here. Now, since we only have one option, you can click this uh, icon, right? And I'll, I'll show you the difference in a bit. So let me go back to the results tab here and go to preview and you can see that when I click on the supplier it shows me the link text details right and, and the user clicks on it and it navigates to the detailed analysis this is useful if you have multiple link options like right so let's say you want to navigate to a different different analysis maybe you have five different links one going to invoice details one going to supply details one going to payment details, whatever the case may be. So in here, when you click on the um, on the data field, it'll show you all those options and you can select where which content you want to navigate to. Now in our case, we only have one um, option. We are just navigating to the invoice details page. So what we could do is we could just click on this option which says do not display in a pop-up if only one action link is available at runtime. So in our case, there's only one available. So if I select this, click OK and save, 
let's see the difference now. So let's go to the results tab and let's preview this. And you can see that now if I click, it directly takes me to the detailed page. It doesn't show you that option of details or it, it doesn't show you the option to select which action link that you want to use, right? So I forgot to show this in the last, uh, in the drill down video, but I, I hope this is helpful. All right, that's all I wanted to show you today. Again, if you have questions, uh, put those in the comment section. I have one question uh, outstanding, which is around GL transaction balances real time. I'll take a look at it and I'll uh, make a separate video on that. But if you have questions, ask those in the comment section. I'll try to make videos um, based on my, <laughs> my time. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, once again, I want to thank you all for the support uh, and the feedback that you guys have given me. Um, I'll talk to you all in the next video. Uh, if you love this content, um, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos on Oracle ERP Cloud and Oracle EPM, um, you can subscribe to the channel. Take care. Have a good weekend. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.